Well, guys, it has been one hell of a week in the NBA. I hope you were along for the ride. Top-rated 15-time best bet since last Sunday, a perfect 5-0 and sweep, as I repeatedly took advantage of not only the NBA trade deadline with teams that were without key players, but also capitalizing on the NBA injury report day in, day out. Teams that were without key players on a nightly basis. 5-0 and sweeps since Sunday. Those top-rated NBA best bet releases now 21-7 and over the past 12 weeks. And FYI, you got every single one of those five best bets for at least half price off. Today, going for winning day number six out of seven, and it's time to raise the bar. Raise the bar 20-dime release the third of the season. It's my Pac-12 game of the year. It goes on the nighttime guard. It is going to be Arizona at Colorado, and it is going to be the half price play of the day. The coupon code, if you're interested, is the word RAISE, R-A-I-S-E. That is over at demarcosports.com. And FYI, before I get to your complimentary plays, and of course, I am on a nine and three run with the college comp plays since last Saturday. Uh, If you want to know who's hot, let me give props and send them out to Shawn Michaels, who has just had one hell of a college basketball season. Uh, Today, he's going for college basketball winner number 17 out of 20 this year. And so far with the first 19 releases, and let me get uh, the exact number. So far, the first 19 plays, he has made $10 betters. $9,450. That's wins minus losses minus the VIG. He's 3 0 with his normal top rated 100 dime plays. He has gone 12 3 with his 75 dime releases today, his third ever 150 dime release. Not of the season, of his career ever. And he is one of the legacy handicappers here at the site. Uh, since I created them 22 years ago. Uh, He's calling it, what is it, his 14-point mismatch of the year, one of the 20 games tipping off at 2 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, It is also discounted today for half price off. You can check it out over at demarcosports.com. So with that being said, let's get to your complimentary plays. Um, Let's run them in reverse chronological order for you. There's some interesting games on today's card. Um, You know, I was looking at the uh, BYU game tonight, minus 11 at home uh, tonight against Kansas State. I was not surprised that Kansas State upset Kansas at home in overtime a couple of nights ago because Kansas State was in a must-win situation. Uh, They were the home dog in that one. And Kansas, let's face it, has been a Jekyll and Hyde team. You put them at the Fog Allen Fieldhouse, they are undefeated. You put them on the road and the Jayhawks just can't win. 0-4 in the Big 12 Highway. So to see Kansas State rally from that uh, 11-point second-half deficit and to win that game didn't surprise me at all uh, in that contest. Now, BYU is returning home after a one-and-one road split. They won in Morgantown, beating West Virginia. Did lose in Oklahoma, but not only were they a tired team, but they were an injury-depleted team, only playing eight players. But now they're back in Provo, where they've lost two games. They lost at the Marriott Center to um, Utah, and they also lost to um, Cincinnati, right, in uh, a Big 12 game. I like BYU in this game minus the 11 because Kansas State is a thin team without much of a bench. They really got three primary scorers that account for nearly 65% of their points. Um, I think BYU is a little healthier here. Uh, Kansas State, listen, I'm surprised even Kansas State did come back in that game considering that they had 16 turnovers that led to 21 Kansas points in that contest. They have lost their last four Big 12 road games. Uh, losing by three at Oklahoma State, by 22 at Houston, by 11 at Iowa State, by one at Texas Tech. Now, granted, a couple of them have certainly been close, uh, but this is a team that uh, is not a good three-point shooting team. They're like 290 in the nation out of 353 teams. They're also last in Big 12 in uh, turnover percentage and 350th 
National League. So I think Kansas State is going to run out of steam here in the second half, and I like BYU minus 11. I will tell you right now, however, of all the complimentary plays, BYU is the one that I leak like, like least. That's what you get for working all night again. And what is it? Uh, 7.15 in the morning, my time here on the Pacific Coast. Um, here's another interesting game uh, in the Colonial Conference. College of Charleston is in a three-way tie with North Carolina Wilmington and uh, Drexel University for first place in the Colonial. Now, North Carolina Wilmington has the game uh, has the advantage and has the tiebreaker here since they have beaten Drexel and College of Charleston. Carlos Charleston is a five and a half point favorite. Now, when it comes to offense, the Cougars have the advantage here. Um, they're in double revenge because they lost each of the last two years by a single point to Drexel. The Dragons were the only one of only four teams to beat Charleston last year. Um, this is a 17 and 7 team, a very good high octane team offensively, 32nd in the nation, averaging about 81 points a game. A very good team when it comes to depth. Uh, seventh in bench scoring this year, getting about 33 points a game. Uh, they take a lot of three pointers. A matter of fact, third in the nation in threes taken per game, averaging about 31 from beyond the arc. And they make a lot of them, too. 15th in the nation in terms of three-pointers per game made, a little over 10 per game. Drexel has lost three of its last four, and all three of those losses have come on the road by 19 at NC Wilmington on Thursday. Not unexpected since the Seahawks are definitely the best team at this point in the Colonial, and by five at Monmouth as well. Uh, so I'm going to go with College of Charleston minus the five and a half. I really like the Cougars in this game. The only thing that put me off, however, is that Kobe Rogers, their fourth leading scorer, one of their guards, the starter, uh, who averages 9.7 points and 4.8 rebounds, has missed the past two games. This is day to day. Couldn't find out any more information than that, whether or not he'll be available today. But I do like College of Charleston here in double revenge at home. Here's another team that's in revenge, and this one is a good play. Butler, minus four at the Hinkle Fieldhouse, uh, 10 and two at home, taking on Providence. Now, Butler is coming off a nine point loss at Connecticut on Tuesday, a game in which they shot miserably from three point range, four for 18. It snapped their four game winning streak that included a 99 98 win at Creighton last Friday. Remember that for a second. Providence, meanwhile, a team that is two and five on the road this season, uh, is coming off a 91-87 overtime win at home against, ta-da, number 19 Creighton on Wednesday. Now, Providence has lost its last two on the road to Villanova. I don't know how anybody has lost to Villanova, a team that has lost six of its last seven games. They lost that game by 18, and they lost to UConn, ironically, by 18 as well. Providence is four and five straight up since losing their big guy, Bryce Hopkins. Um, now, Bryce Hopkins had 12 points and 13 rebounds in 41 minutes in the first meeting between these two. And let me just check what date that was. Oh, December 23rd, when the Friars won 85-75 in overtime at home. But here's the thing. That game, because Butler had some mechanical issues with the plane that was flying them there. They did not arrive for that game until early on that morning of game time. And yet, they were able to push it, tie it at the end of regulation, push it to overtime. I like Butler in revenge for two reasons. One, they're in revenge. Two, well, I'll make it three reasons. Two, they're at home. And I think Providence coming off that big, big win against Creighton, this is an ideal letdown spot to go against the Friars. Another game I want to talk about, you've got Wisconsin-Green Bay, a team that I have used so many times to talk to you about frequently here today, is a 10-point road dog at Youngstown State. Another team that I've talked about frequently here as well. You've got the two leaders in the Horizon League battling today. And both teams are coming off overtime wins, in which they both covered. Wisconsin Green Bay was a two-and-a-half-point road dog 
at Robert Morris, needed overtime, covered, and won by five on Thursday night. This is a team that is 17 and 6 against the spread this season, a team that is 10 and 4 in the Horizon League. Youngstown State, meanwhile, needed overtime and got the cover 97 85, laying eight and a half points against Wisconsin Milwaukee to improve to 12 and 1 at home this year. They are also 11 and 3 in the Horizon League. So again, you've got the two top teams in that league facing off here. Interesting little statistical quirk, the straight up winner is 8-0-1 against the spread in the last nine meetings. Youngstown State has also won four straight in the series. I look at this number, is it a trap? That's what I keep asking myself. And it's why I didn't pull the trigger on this game and instead went out west Oh, hell, I'm out west. I stayed out west, and I <laughs> looked at Colorado and Arizona as my best bet today because I'm just saying to myself, my God, not that numbers tell you anything, but Wisconsin Green Bay is a 10-and-a-half-point dog or a 10-point dog here, but I got to I gotta ride this dog here because Wisconsin Green Bay has just been so damn good to me this season. I got to take the points here, Wisconsin Green Bay, plus to 10 at Youngstown State in a battle of two teams that are both coming off overtime wins and covers. So let's rate these plays. And as I said initially, BYU as at the bottom of the barrel. Um, At the top of the heap, I would say I would go with Butler. Actually, you know what? Let's, Let's revamp that. College of Charleston would be number one. Right there, 1A would be Butler. Wisconsin Green Bay would be there in slot number two. And BYU would be down there at the bottom. Other games I had looked at today, FYI, since I handicapped this garden and it took me forever. I also looked at Kentucky minus the five and a half at home against BYU. Yeah, Kentucky, I used them in their last game and they got the winning cover against Vanderbilt. But listen, do I think the Wildcats are good? It depends on what day and what hour we're talking about. And the problem is they still have some injuries. You know, DJ Wagner, who their starting point guard, who averages 12 points a game, he is going to miss his third straight game. They are one and three without him this season. And also Trey Mitchell, who averages 12.3 points and 7.6 rebounds, did not play against Vanderbilt. And he is most likely going to be out another week. So that's problematic. Uh, So that's why I stayed away from the Wildcats today. And plus, you know, can they lose a third straight game at home? I don't think so. Can they cover the five and a half point spread? That's the problem there. I keep asking myself and I'm just not sure whether or not they can. Um, Xavier today is plus one at home uh, against Creighton. And Creighton, as I've said repeatedly here on the video, You never know what you get from the Blue Jays one minute to another. Now, Creighton won at home 85-78 in the first meeting back on January 23rd. These two teams are tied for fourth place in the Big East, both at 7-5. Xavier, the Musketeers, were lucky to beat Villanova. Again, a struggling Villanova team that couldn't get off a final shot to tie that game. In the final 18 seconds, I don't know what the hell was going on with the Wildcats in the closing minute of that. Yes, it was their third straight win for the Musketeers, but they only shot 34.4% at home in that game. So the Musketeers, a one-point favorite underdog? I don't know. I kind of lean toward Creighton to bounce back from that loss at Providence. But again, some nights the Blue Jays look like world beaters, and other days they just look like, like anybody can beat them. You got Duke minus 12 and a half at home against Boston College. Now, Boston College is coming off the one point home loss against Florida State, and they've lost three of their last four on the AC Sci Highway with the only win coming against Notre Dame. Big deal. Now, Notre Dame is the team that Duke just beat after getting blown out by North Carolina last weekend, but they certainly didn't look good in doing so. Yet, this has been a series that has always been one sided. I think Duke is 28 and 3 lifetime in the series, and the Blue Devils are 11 and 2 in Durham this season. 12 and a half point line. I'd actually go ahead and lay the points with Duke. I think that's the way to go. Am I enamored with laying 12 and a half points with Duke? No, I'd rather lay them with BYU. So, again, That's uh, just some other games that I happened to handicap today. I wish you well, guys. Um, 
I think there's this game going on in Las Vegas tomorrow. I'll be back to talk about it. Good luck. Talk to you again on Sunday.